And if anybody's got any questions, just save them for a minute. Um, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to show going from partner pack. Uh, you know, they build a little frame. Uh, and you could use partner pack. You can use Glazer Studio. You can use Athena. Just about any software. Uh, this it does have an NC output. So most software has an NC output where you can go directly from the software to this machine. Uh, if you get custom dies, uh, you can create your own fabs in the software. It has its own NC program where you create your own custom dies uh, and, and do all your, your loading onto your bars if you have anything like that. Uh, so Mike's going to uh, give you a little demo here real quick and then we're going to show over to the, to the machine. Okay, go ahead Mike. Okay, yeah, this is Mike Kings with the, um, the Michael Group, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is start off here um, in the um, Blazer Studio or Partner Pack program. Um, in here, we've built up a project, or you'd have your projects built. Like Bill said, you could import those projects in from other locations too, or other programs. But we're gonna be running from here. Basically, I've got. Um, a storefront and a curtain wall project that we're going to show you this morning how that's all fabbed on the machine. Um, I'm going to select my storefront project um, and take it down. This has already been created, but when we go into the fabrications, you'll see what we've got. I'm going to have it walk through and create the fabrications, and you would do this um, no matter what format that you're coming from. Um, the first stick we're going to be fabricating out there is our left jam which is, um, if you'll notice out here, we're feeding this through the machine from right to left. Okay, so as this is laid down on the, on the table where we can drill into the top edge of it, you'll see that we're going to be feeding, if you kind of visualize laying this down on the table, um, we're going to be fabbing the top of the stick first or the head going down to the sill. And that's what it tells us if we look at the report here, you'll see our head is going to have holes drilled at, in this case, one point. 8125 or 1 and 13 sixteenths, and that's from the head down all the way down the horizontal, basically in the middle of the frame at 23 inches, and then the sill on a 48 inch stick is going to be fabbing down at 46, 47 inches, which will be at the bottom edge of the stick. Um, it tells us about each of these um, fabs that we're going to have out here, where it is located off the back edge of the stick. In this case, we're going to have two holes being drilled side by side, one at a, roughly an inch out, one roughly at three and a half inches out from the back edge of the die. We're going to drill through to make sure we pierce through the walls um, to a depth of three-eighths of an inch. This is something you can set how deep you want the drill to go. We've got a limit set so the drill doesn't go through the back side of the die. We're going to limit it to go no more than one inch if it um, was going through. Um, we're drilling through the top edge of the die. Um, the machine will drill through the top, the bottom, or the front side of each of the dies. Um, we've got a tool set up out here. We've labeled all of our drills, makes it easy to find the proper drill by them being labeled. The drill we're using here, just a straight drill, we've labeled as a D10A, which equivalent um, to a .228 diameter hole, and that's the clear hole we're going to need for the screw spline material, clear hole going through the die. And it continues through every one of our pieces that we're going to cut. If you'll notice here, it goes through three and the four. Each of the different dies we're going to cut, how that's going to be fabbed. This is one of the reports that, um, that we get out here. The other report that we're able to, to find out there is our stick fabrication, which allows you to see the stick visually. We're going to have to pull that back up. Um, Kind of go to 75 here, so it kind of shows it. Same elevation as we had before, but in this case, when we look at the 1R stick, it's going to show it to us visually, and you can see out here, this is a stops-down system. So in this case, our our head got staggered holes, our sills, our horizontals got staggered holes, the sill holes are in line. Same information as we had before on that report, except now you're seeing a visual of the stick. Okay, once we've verified the information, we've gone out there and kind of, you always want to spot check and verify the information before you send it to the saw, and this is the easiest way to check that. We're able to take that information, um, and we can send it right out to the, to the fab. One other thing that you're able to do, though, before it goes to the fab, 
going back in is to go to what we call miscellaneous fabrications. We'll pull up that same job. And this shows us all of the sticks that we're going to fab out here for the one we pulled up. And we're able to go and verify, say, for like the, um, the left vertical. It shows us the, the different holes that we're going to drill out there. What you could do on this screen, the machine has, or the, the program has automatically laid out where all the holes are going to be located, but maybe for some reason you needed to tweak one of those holes. You needed to move it in or out, or you didn't want it drilled in, this, um, in the normal place. You could come in at this point and manually override those fabs, either from the, the X location, which is the in and out, um, the Y or the Z, the diameter of the drill, if you for some reason want a different drill, but you could modify each of the fabs manually. You could also add fabs. Maybe there's a hole that, um, that for some reason a weep hole or, or an extra hole for an anchor or such that you want to drill at the same time. You could come in at this point and you could add in another line. Um, when you do that, you have to have to know exactly where you want that to drill and you have to tell the program what you want to do there. But this allows you to manually add fabs to the system. Within this miscellaneous fab, as Bill was mentioning before, you can take the, the file that's generated by ePartners uh, or uh, the Glazer Studio Partner Pack, or you could import those in from some other source where we can go to import. Or we can merge data, if, say that um, if you've got this set up in a spreadsheet or it's coming in um, from a, a different format, such as from Athena or such, we could merge that in and then make the modifications here if we needed to and then output that out to the file, um, just like I'm going to do in just a, just a minute to go out to the fabs, um, take it out to the fab machine. We've gone through and we've verified everything and we're now ready to send that file out to the machine. So what we do at this point is we're going to tell it we need, um, we'd select our project here, the demo storefront. We're going to go down to our optimization in this case, coming through the program. We have to go in and generate those reports. Now we don't need to edit our stock link on the program side. The, um, the smart or the, the Rhino Stop will maintain all of your inventory, all your drop material, and it's going to decide which pieces to use, whether the best uses of a drop or a full stock length of metal. And it'll tell the, um, your um, operator exactly what he needs to pull. So we're going to go on by the edit. We don't need to do anything on the optimization. Comes to the point where we're ready to transfer these files out. Now, at this point, we tell it yes, and it asks us where we want to store those. Now, I'm going to be storing those onto a USB drive. You could also have this directed to a network path where these files are stored up on your network, and then they're pulled down off the network at the um, at the Rhino Fab machine. Um, in that case, I'm putting it right onto a, a USB drive. Okay, and now that's been saved out. Um, Going to next out of here, minimize the program down, and I just want to open up that that drive that you that we have out there, um, and just kind of give you an idea. This is what is going out to the machine. If we were to open that file up, created a, a file that's going to be read in by the um, by the Rhino Fab, but this shows us all the information that the Rhino Fab is going to use. It tells us every stick, the the product code, the color. Um, all the information, the drill locations, everything we need to know about that stick. Now I've now created that, and at this point we're going to pass this off over to um, to Walter to where he um, he'll take and walk us through the machine side of it. And so at this point I'm on mute just for a second, hand the mic off to him. <laughs> 